Princess Hyacinth, The Surprising Tale of a Girl Who Floated by Florence Perry Hyde, illustrated by Lane Smith. Princess Hyacinth had a problem. Well, you're saying everyone has a problem, but this was an unusual problem. Oh, she didn't look unusual. That wasn't it. She had two eyes with a nose between them and a mouth under that. You know, the usual things and the usual arrangement. In fact, if she wasn't all dressed up in her princess clothes, you'd think she was just anybody. So what was the problem? Princess Hyacinth floated. Unless she was attached to something or weighted down, she just floated up, up, up. So the king and queen had little golden weights sewn into the hems of Princess Hyacinth's gowns and little diamond pebbles sewn into the tops of her socks. Her crown had the heaviest jewels of the kingdom and a rhinestone strap under her chin to keep it on. As long as she was all dressed up in her princess things, she didn't float at all. In fact, she could hardly move. But the minute her crown was off and her gown and all that, up, up, up she would go in her royal underwear. The only time she could take off her royal stuff was when she was in the palace. Then, if she floated, and of course she did, she'd just float up to the ceiling and they could always get her down in the morning. Why can't I float around outside? was a question Princess Hyacinth had asked six million times. Because you'd just float away altogether, her parents explained. Poor Princess Hyacinth. She wished she could run, around, run outside like the children who came to play on the palace grounds. Instead, she sat at her window in her royal bathing suit, wearing a seatbelt, looking at all the children having fun. One was a red-headed boy who could fly his sky-blue kite higher than all the others. His name was Boy. He waved at Princess Hyacinth every day, and she waved back. He smiled at her, and she smiled back. Boy had painted a gold crown on his kite in honor of the princess. Wasn't that nice? Boy had come over to her window to say hello a couple of times. Well, Seven times. She had counted every single one. Today, he walked over again. I like your kite, said Princess Hyacinth. I like your crown, said Boy. He turned to go. And I like you, he said over his shoulder. At least that's what Princess Hyacinth thought he said. Maybe he had just said toodaloo or yike doodle doo She couldn't be sure. After a while, the children left the palace grounds. I'm terribly, horribly, dreadfully bored, said the princess. She decided to go to the park. Of course, she had to get all dressed up in her princess clothes first. The weights and everything. The crown and everything. And then off she went, walking to the park. Well, she wasn't exactly walking. She was sort of dragging along. She saw a balloon man coming toward her. Suddenly, Princess Hyacinth had an exciting idea. 
Mr. Balloon Man, she said, I'd like to float up there with the balloons. That, said the Balloon Man, is impossible. No, it isn't, said Princess Hyacinth firmly. If I took off all my princess clothes, you could tie a string to my ankle and I could float. Oh dear, said the Balloon Man. But since she was the princess, she got her way. Princess Hyacinth, Hyacinth took off everything from tip to toe, except her royal underwear, and put it in a neat pile under her umbrella. She left a sign. Do not touch property of the princess. The balloon man tied a string to her ankle and held on to the other end, and up she went. I feel like a balloon, said the princess. The balloon man walked through the park, and Princess Hyacinth bobbed along with the balloons. It was pretty exciting. But alas and alack, somehow or other, the balloon man let go of the string that was attached to Princess Hyacinth. And up she went. Oh, wow, said the princess. The balloon man ran to tell a policeman. The policeman told the palace guards. The palace guards notified the king and queen. Oh dear, said the queen. The king got out his binoculars so that he could watch the princess as she floated up and up. As long as I keep an eye on her, she won't get into any trouble, he said. But Princess Hyacinth floated higher and higher. But hey, she loved this free bird feeling. She whirled and she twirled. She swooshed and she swirled. She zigged and she zagged and she zigzagged. She zoomed and caroomed and cartwheeled. She did handsprings and headstands, flip-flops and fandangos. It was the most fun she had ever had in her whole life. And all the time she was floating up, up, up. Now she couldn't even see the castle. I never knew the sky was so high, she thought. She saw something nearby. What could it be? She looked closer. What was it? It was her crown, her golden crown. What was it doing here? She was close enough now to touch it. Look, it was Boy's kite with the painting of her crown. Oh my, before she knew it, she was tangled up. Now what? Down on the ground, boy felt a tug and started to reel in his kite, princess and all. The king, who had been watching her through his binoculars so that she wouldn't get into any trouble, saw the whole thing. Oh, hooray, Princess Hyacinth! has been rescued. Boy was a hero. The king gave him a bag of gold. Now what? Well, since Princess Hyacinth had had such a wonderful time floating up there in the air, she wanted to do that every single day. And she did. Every day, she went out to the palace grounds in her royal underwear, and up, 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 she would float. Then Boy would fly his kite up, 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 right next to her, and reel her in, 
when she wanted to come down. And then she would invite him into the palace for tea and popcorn. The problem about the floating was never solved, and that's too bad. But Princess Hyacinth was never bored again. Good. The end.